purpose of this will not be to teach you how to use it all, but rather to show you what it can do. And then when you're ready, you know, you can invest some time in reading the docs and, and trying to use it and so on. But I'm just going to go fairly quickly so that at least you're aware of the features that exist and that will help you decide whether this is something that's useful for you or not. So the, the bundle is called our query renderer. And the idea behind this is we've got this, you know, in our utilities bundle, which just shows up in here, we've got this query tool that you can use to conveniently run queries, whether this is to like debug a query that you didn't want to use in script or research something or whatever. The shortcoming, one of the primary shortcomings of this is that oftentimes we create these queries and we'd like to give them to users in a sense that, that they could use this and run these queries themselves. And this is not a very practical way of doing it. Additionally, when the data is rendered here, the tool that draws it here knows nothing about column types and so on. So all of this is just viewed as text, which means that if you sort it, let's say by a date, it sorts alphabetically. Same thing with amounts, right? That there's, there's nothing here. Plus, you, know, you can't do much more than just dump this. Again, it's useful for this, but beyond that, it's not. NetSuite does have this whole analytics workbook thing, but that too, you know, the only place you can run it is in that context, and it's a little more awkward for, for quick rendering, plus you can't drop the results anywhere else. So what I wanted to do, I set out to solve this problem, and essentially my goal was as close as I could get to it to create something that is a substitute for saved searches. And knowing that I can't reproduce everything, but at least that was my inspiration. So meaning that I wanted to be able to let you create these queries that would produce more meaningful results in terms of the look and feel, to present a menu of, of queries that the users can then run themselves, uh, to have the ability to have convenient filters that the users can fill in as they're interacting with these queries, and the ability to render these queries as sublists on transactions, the way you do with saved searches. So I wanted all of that to be done with this tool. And in some ways, I think I've exceeded what NetSuite's own saved search can do. In some ways, I couldn't quite match what they can do because they have certain tricks up their sleeves that, that they don't give to us. The idea is that you start with one of these query records. So this is a new record type. And the, the core of it really is here where you define the query. Now, the demonstration I'm gonna do is gonna have some pretty stupid queries in the sense that, you know, you probably would never run a query like this. It is just to demonstrate the features, not the cleverness of the query. Right. Now, if you just defined this query and said, hey, I want this to be available on the menu, uh, the query render has this menu here. So if I click on this, you will see all the queries that I have defined and said, I want to make them available to users to execute. And also queries have the ability to be restricted to roles or users. So people will only see the queries to which they have permission. One of the beauties is you can create a query and say, this is only for the finance group. And so if that's all you did, you would uh, get sort of the same kind of output as you do here, just rows and columns with nothing more intelligent. But then I start giving you these sublists that let you tell the renderer more about the query. So as you know, in SQL, you can alias things. You've got these columns. So this column here will just appear as id. This will appear as tran id and so on. Here, I make it appear as customer name. So I'm aliasing some columns. But when you come here now, you get to decorate this more. So let me show you an example. So you give it the name of a column as it would be rendered by this. And then you can tell, for example, I want the heading for this to be different. I want it to say subscription instead of the column name. Right? You can then say that this column should really be a hyperlink to something. For example, here, I want the trend ID to be a hyperlink to a record of type sales order. And then I pass it the parameters that will add to the URL when it's opening up this hyperlink. If you specify that a column is for reference only, it won't actually be rendered on the screen. The renderer just uses it for maybe building URLs and so on. So you include it in your results, but the user will never see it. And then there's some other thing just in terms of how it will look on the screen, which I'll show a little bit later. Uh, if you tell it the data type you're dealing with, 
then it knows how to render it properly in a list and therefore lets you sort it. And then you also have the ability at the column level to filter it to only certain roles and users. So you could have a general query, but one column is only reserved for you know, the head of finance. So it will render that and not show that to anybody else. All right, so that's, that's the first sublist. The next sublist is filters. You can define all the filters that the user should be allowed to use when running this query. You give it the label of the filter, what type of field it is, et cetera, and then how it will actually translate that to a where clause inside the query. And when you uh, specify, for example, on select queries, like here I say, hey, it's a selective type customer. And so now it will simply give you the entirety of the customer table. But you can also create custom selects where you create a query and then the drop down will only have the rows available here. For example, we have a, a project record, a reference on a sales order. And I want to show, I want to let people pick by project, but I only want to let them pick by project that are in status two. So they cannot filter by any other project type. You can also say whether on some of these fields, you want to give the user an operator. So for example, this is a date field. And by virtue of you saying it's an operator, they're going to not only be able to select the date, but they will be able to select whether they want it to be before or before or on, you know, after, et cetera. Same thing with text. If you say, give them an operator, then they can say contain, starts with, et cetera. And in here, you simply use the two variable substitutions, operator and value, and it will work all that into you. And then this tells it where in here it should put it. And the power of this is sometimes you have queries with subqueries and different filters need to go in different places. And with this, you have all of that power. And then of course, the help text that they will see as they're interacting with a query. You can, for example, maybe you won't give them an operator, right? You'll just say number and you can say, you know, only orders that are this old or older will be shown because you've fixed the operator. All right, I've covered a lot. Let me just show you now just based on these two things, how this query would render. Come in here and I'll run this query. So it will initially run it without any filters and here are the results. And now subscription, if I say yes, right? As soon as I change that, it will regenerate this list based on that filter. You know, here's my custom dropdown that only shows certain projects because there's a project in status too. So I don't know whether this will give any data, but see, okay. So nothing here. Also, anytime a query is rendered anywhere, and you'll see there are different places to render it, it automatically provides this hyperlink which downloads the data CSV. And now because I told it, this is, let's say a date field, it will sort intelligently. Also, when you alias field directly in NetSuite, you cannot alias them with, let's say something that has a space inside it. So that's why I use here, I said, let's say the date, the trend date, I want it to be a nice order date. So I, I specify that here because I could not have aliased it as that. If I don't have an alias, it just uses the default. When you create one of these, you can specify whether you want it to render it as a list, meaning it'll show as many rows as there are, like in this case, a thousand, or as a page list, in which case they'll only get 25 at a time and they can flip through pages, or if you want it to render it as HTML, in which case, you can provide the CSS for how it renders that. Now, if you render as HTML and only in that mode, you can then also have highlighting. So you can have conditions. Again, you specify the, the alias name, the condition, and then what the CSS attribute of that will be. And then the legend that users will see when they see those rows. And then the final thing is the render on record. This is where you can specify the different record types that you want this query to render on. So for example, I'm saying here, I want this query to render on sales orders. In this case, I wanted to use HTML, so it's gonna use the CSS. Here is the filter to you. It will add this where clause into this query. So it'll pass the entity from the record I'm on to here. And that's how it will then filter this result for just that sales order. And then if I want it on its own tab, 
I specify the name tab, or I can show it up as a group on the main tab. I can even say I want it to be rendered as a single field anywhere on the screen. Right? So let me just demo that for a second. Notice we've got a bunch of orders and I made the order number the hyperlink. So when you click on this thing, it automatically takes you to a sales order with that filter. It makes it very easy to provide those kind of hyperlinks to, you know, to every kind of column that you have. So here's the sales order. Here is other orders for the customer. Remember, I said render it in a tab called other orders for customer. And here they are. And my legend, right, I told it to highlight. Here are old orders. Here are orders for over a thousand. Again, this is nonsensical because the currencies are all weird and whatnot, but you see the idea. And you could also specify a form, like if this is only on a particular sales form. And you can specify as many as you want. For example, you could do the same thing and say, I also want this on a customer. You would supply it a different filter. And then on the customer, you would essentially get the same results. You would get the orders for that customer. If you have a small table, you could add it as a field and it would just drop, let's say, a mini HTML table right inside. So, so far, I've just been showing you one query. I have a different query that I said I also want to show in a sales order, but on the main tab as a list. And again, notice that you always have this download link anywhere this thing is run. You can also specify that one query should be a, or a column should be a hyperlink to another query. And so you can, by creating multiple queries, provide interesting drill down capabilities. So for example, if I come, um, okay, sales by date, let's say. Again, some, just a silly query that shows you like total orders by date, number of orders and their amount. This is a hyperlink to a subquery. So if you click on that, It'll just take you to another query, pass it parameters, and now this query. And any of these columns could take you to another query and so on. So you can create sort of drill down features through this concept. I also provide pivot capability. In this pivot, the, the, the renderer will not perform any math for you. It will, it will assume that you have already done all of the math, whether you want it to average or, or you know, count the number of records or whatever. And it can only pivot on a single column. This is the fixed column, right? The customer. So it's going to be a table of customers. Then I want you to pivot based on the month. So that's going to be across, you know, January, February, March. And then the value comes from this column. If I render this query, and that's, there's a quick way right here too. Now this one, I didn't add any filters and so on, but notice. All right. Generally, that's the tool. The last the kind of the parting comments before I open it to question is, you know, this is still version, you know, 0 0.5 or something, right? I've given it to a couple of clients and, and, you know, we're starting to use it in production, but it's still early. So if, you know, if there's a problem or something, let me know and, and I got to deal with it, right? I've invested a whole lot of hours into this already, but if you decide, hey, it, it needs a feature, just let me know what um, I'm going to write up the documentation on how all of this works, right? How to make these things work shortly, and I'll make that available. That's all I wanted to cover. Uh, I'll open it up now to questions. Bon, it's Marty. This is so awesome. This is just amazing. Thank you. And like, this is like a breakthrough.